I'm delighted he's with us. It's been a long time. Uh, Donald Trump here on The Laura Ingram Show. Hey, Mr. Trump, how are you? Hi, Laura. It's been a long time. How have you been? Yeah, and do you remember the questions I asked about you? I don't know. I don't know if you want to make them public. I'm only kidding. <laughs> well, I, all I remember is that by the end of the lunch, you gave me your car for the rest of the day, and I took it to New Jersey a couple of places. I'm sure it was good. okay. I don't th- very good. Just it was few... absolutely fine, but I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. And you've done great. It? I'm very proud of you. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, I, t- I try to uh, read your books and uh, I try to I listen carefully to to what you say about uh, about our competitiveness in our country. I, I want to share with you something that um, both President Bush and uh, Jeb Bush uh, have said in recent weeks about immigration and the need for uh, basically uh, down the line, a comprehensive path to citizenship. Let's listen. It would be incredibly stupid to ignore the burgeoning Hispanic vote. So if you want to elect a center-right president of the United States, it seems to me you should be concerned about places where, but for the Hispanic vote, elections are won or lost. We've been through this kind of period of isolationism, protections of nativism. I'm a little concerned that we may be going through the same period. I think he was uh, talking about... I don't, people like you, nativism, protectionism, isolationism. What do you think about those well, comments? Well, I'm a very conservative person. You know, people don't know me from the standpoint of politics, and I guess they're getting to know me. You've seen my stance on China, and thank you very much because I heard on Bill's program, you and I love that program, and I love Bill. He's great. Uh, but I heard on Bill O'Reilly's program recently you uh, were sort of saying, I don't always agree with Donald Trump, but boy, do I love what he says about China and others. And so I'm a very conservative guy, and I believe that you're either a person that is a citizen of the United States or you're not. And you either have borders or you don't have borders. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make it possible for somebody that's really good to become a citizen. But I think part of the problem that this country has is we're taking in people that are in some cases good and in some cases are, are not good, and in some cases are criminals. I mean, I remember years ago where Castro was sending his worst over to this country. He was sending criminals over to this country, and we've had that with other countries where they use us as a dumping ground, and frankly, that's just the kind of thinking – that the fact that we allow that to happen – is what's, you know, really hurting this country very badly. And then, you know, you have so many different other elements taking place. And you le- you have OPEC, and you know very well what I- how I feel on OPEC. And it's amazing that other people don't pick it up. I- it's just amazing. And the only reason I can think of is that OPEC is very rich, and they have every lobbyist in Washington telling their local politician to keep your mouth shut. But, hey, but OPEC- Donald, but you heard what Bush said. I mean, we have the former president of the United States basically calling – in, in in a way, this is implied, the type Tea Party movement, the independents who turned out to vote, who believe in the rule of law, nativists. Well, it's a very interesting statement. And, you know, I, I, hey, I think it's great when people come into the country, become a citizen of the country and do a great job. But when they climb over walls and climb over fences and come in and take money out of the country and go back home and spend the money in Mexico or wherever they spend it, you know, there are problems with that. And you either have a country with law and order and boundaries or you don't. You know, that's the number one principle. And it almost seems that we're becoming amorphous. It's like, do we have a country or not? So that's the way I feel about it. And and I just, you know, there's so many things going on. When we talk about jobs and China's making everything, China's making everything. I mean, I order products for buildings. I build beautiful, big very nice, very successful buildings. And these contractors come in, Laura, and they're, they're always, you know, where's the product made? Oh, it's made in China. I said, does anybody, like, make products in this country anymore? And I buy a lot of stuff from China, and I hate doing it. And by the way, the quality of an American product Lousy. is better. But their manipulation, and their manipulation of the currency makes it very, very hard, if not impossible, for American companies to compete. Where do you see what happens to Boeing? You know, they come in and they give you this little beautiful little – Little order, $40 billion. It sounds like a lot, but it's peanuts compared to what they're cheating us out of as a country. But they did that for a PR. It's a PR order. But they're building their own company now to make airplanes. And they're going to kill Boeing. I mean, they're going to and, – and by the way, and, and the euro is not exactly going to be thrilled. The European consortium that makes Airbus is not going to be thrilled. What would what you happens. do to put up uh, – what, what would you do to respond to what is now very well documented uh, market manipulation efforts, uh, unfair subsidies to, to companies in China, stealing our intellectual property, all the things that you've talked about? What would you, if you were president, do today 
to respond to those and perhaps uh, dial them back? I would announce without equivocation a 25 percent tax increase on anything purchased from China. They would come to the table. They would be and by the way, don't worry about the fact that we owe them a trillion dollars because that's peanuts compared to what this would represent. That would be paid back very quickly and very easily. They would come to the table and make a deal with us so fast because if you did that, then the market manipulation no longer matters because the 25 percent would take care of the market manipulation, the extra cost. But more importantly, people would start making toys in North Carolina that make things in Alabama, that make things in, by the way, in Massachusetts and New England. We have all those closed factories that have all gone to other I remember. Fall like River. Mexico with NAFTA. Mm-hmm. You know, they've all gone to other places. So tariffs. You would basically put tariffs on Chinese goods. Oh, I would absolutely. Because I'm a free trader. I believe in free trade, but I don't. Yeah, we're losing the trade war now. Yeah, we're we're, there's a trade war. Everyone used to always say to me, well, Laura, there's you you would spark a trade war. And I would say, well, guess what? We're we're in a trade war and we're losing badly. China (laughs) made. Let's let's use the word profit because it's easier to understand. China made. Last year, a profit of $250 billion on this country, $250 billion. Guess what? If we don't do business with China, that means we're going to pick up $250 billion. Okay, it's very simple. And more importantly, look, I really believe in free trade, but I believe in free trade. If you have a company, Laura, and you go to China right now, you have no chance of doing business in China. When they come here, we open up our arms because we're stupid. Our leaders are stupid. They open up their arms. Oh, please come here. Please come here. So these guys come, and they open up companies. They sell their products. They do whatever they want to do. You try doing it in China. Look what they did to General Electric. They took all their technology. They want them to build plants over there. They want them to do things. We don't do that. What would you uh, cut? Because you're you're someone who is a bottom-line guy, and that's what I've always liked about you. I mean, whether business, politics, bottom line. Bottom line... You had the ability to cut any federal department. What would you do? What would you cut first? Well, I think there's a lot of things you could cut. I'll give you an example. Education is very interesting to me because I'm a big believer in education. I'm a, I was a good student. I went to the Wharton School of Finance and all that stuff, right? We have this huge Department of Education, this huge, huge monolithic monster. And yet education should be local in the states for the most part, you know, set certain standards. But it should be a local thing. It shouldn't be a federal government thing. Education is a local thing, local people, local teachers, the mothers going to the school, the parents running the school. I mean, you look at that, and Mm -hmm. and then you go into Washington, and you go blocks and blocks. We have nothing else but department. I'm trying to figure out what do all these people do. I want to have you. Many, many things. I mean, it's just just completely – uh, out of control and crazy, and and I, I'm I'm hoping that you're going to con- seriously consider getting into the race. I mean, you and I disagree on some social issues. I could have you on for an hour. I just want to download everything you think. We, I know I'd love to be on anytime you want. But what social issue do we disagree on? Pro life, I think. I'm pro life. Oh, you are pro. Okay. Oh, so you didn't oh, know okay. that? No, I no. thought you were kind of you you were evolving on no, this no, a little I'm bit. Pro, but, no, no, I'm pro. All right. Okay, well, will you come back soon? I'd love to have a conversation with you longer. Donald Trump, thank you so much for joining us. Good time. Thank you, Laura. All right, you take care. Be good. We're going to have a lot to get to on The Loringham Show.